judge us like all the nations. The burning of this for you, Samuel, when they said, Give us the king, he judged us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to the Lord, which they have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt, even unto this day, where they, they have forsaken, forsaken me, and served, served other gods, so do they also unto thee. thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that ask of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. And he will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which he shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. That we also may be like all the nations. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And now let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. All right, Helen Bob, turn it over to you. Just step over right there, honey. Right here. They took over control. 
and they got in trouble. The first thing they done was was started corruption uh, in the justice system and abusing women and etc. 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 Then they went to war. They got beaten war. Uh, they come home. And they got the the ark, the ark or the covenant, and they took it back with them. And they lost it. Both the men, was, both the brothers, was killed. And when they brought the word back, Eli was sitting on a hall-like thing where he could see the messenger coming. And when he heard the word, he fell off of it and broke his neck. So that was the end of Eli. So now uh, uh, Samuel takes over. Samuel was one of the few in the Bible that was pre-picked by God. In other words, Hannah, though his mother knew in advance that he would be a leader, and she dedicated his life to God, and he was raised by Eli from the time he was two years old. So he probably had a lot of contact with these two brothers that of, Eli, of Eli's sons. I'm sure he did. But he didn't learn a whole lot, I guess, from it. But Samuel was one of the most greatest men in the Bible that God speaks of in the Bible. And it says, And the name of the firstborn, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his son judges over Israel. And the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second was Abia, and they were judges in Beersheba. Now why were they judges in Beersheba? Because that was clear in the southern end of Israel. And he knew he had a problem with them two boys. So in order to sort of get the trouble out of town, he sent them clear down to the lower end of it. If, if you was looking on the map, the bottom part of Israel runs down about equivalent north and south to halfway down the side of the Dead Sea. And that's where they was, clear at the bottom of it. And he figured he wouldn't hear too much from them. But he did. And his son walked not in the ways, but turned aside from Lucy and took bribes and prevented perverted judgment. And when all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, uh, Samuel didn't know they was that they really knew how crooked his sons were, and they were very crooked. But he also did not know that these these people from the twelve tribes, the leaders of the twelve tribes, had came together and decided that they needed a king. That they had to do away with this inherited oh, uh, judgeship that had taken over from Samuel. Although they thought Samuel and knew Samuel was led by God and was one of the greatest things that had ever happened because Samuel had saved him when Eli was going. And it said unto him, Behold, thou art old. And, and they didn't want to come up to Samuel and say, We're going to kick you out of office because of your sons. They had too much respect for him for that. So they came up and they said, And they said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons have not walked in their ways. And now as a king to judge, and now we need a king to judge us like all the nations. Well, all the other nations had a king to judge them, except for Israel. And Israel had their king that had been appointed by God. God was the king that he did. Now, like Mike said there this morning to me, if you go back in, farther back into Nehemiah and some of those books, They'll tell you that Moses had already known that they'd have a king that would run the Jewish people. And he had worked out the principles and the conditions of what that would that king would do with God. And he knew exactly what it would be, what the kingship would be. And God reminded him of it. And, he's, and so he... But the king, but the thing displeased Samuel and they said 
give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Samuel felt that these people thought that he was a failure, that he had failed in letting these two sons take over and things out of control, and he was a failure. But well, that wasn't what their concern was. Their concern was they just wanted to get things sort of straightened out. And they knew that all the rest of the country or the world around had a king that was in charge of, of that. And it was Samuel was approximately 65 years old when they came to him on this. And part of his job was to lead the army. Well, he was getting pretty old for that. And he was also, he made a round of the 12 tribes once a year. Probably spent about a month in each place and went around to each tribe. He was busy, busy, busy. And now, he didn't have time to go down there and straighten up now. So this is what he done. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto thy voice of the people in that day. In all the That's it. Day. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Up until that time, God was the king. When they, when they crossed Joshua, when they first came across the Jordan River, Joshua was in charge. And the first generation of those people, when Joshua was in charge of things, stayed pretty close to God. But after Joshua passed away, and they started getting other people to run things, they fell apart. One of the reasons they fell apart is because they merged with the people who was there, which God told them not to, and they was involved with other religions. According to all the works which had been done since the day they brought them out of Egypt, and to this day, wherewith they were forsaken me, and served other gods, so they do this also unto thee. So in other words, he's telling him, I done went through the same thing you did. When we first came out of Israel, when we first came out of the wilderness, the people done what God had told them to do for just about one generation. And then they fell away. And that's what they had done with Samuel. The first generation, so to speak, and Samuel had been in business quite a while. And the people followed Samuel to the letter. But then they fell away from Samuel. And so God told him, you no different with them than they was with me. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people, and they asked for a king. And like he had, like he had said and Mike and we were talking, the king the king situation was already set up. God was involved in that with with Moses and God knew this was coming. And he said, There will be a manner of king that shall reign over you, and he shall take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots to his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. Now you see you skip from the eleventh verse there to the eighteenth verse. <clears throat> what he describes, what the book describes in that period of time is what they're going to do. They're going to pay taxes. They're going to send their kids to war. All the women are going to go to work in houses. All the women are going to go to work in houses. Everything. everything. They're going to take over everything. Sort of similar to what it is today. Paying taxes, doing whatever you got. But oh, it, re it really would have been worse then than what, what we, we don't we don't understand what it would be like that to have a king. And he said, <clears throat> and ye shall cry out in that, this is in the 18th verse, and ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you shall have chosen, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. So they have already given up on the Lord, and the Lord is going to punish them. And as we mentioned before, the Lord used their enemy to punish them a lot. And he used the Philistines to punish them. The Philistines were a mean bunch of dudes. 
And he used the law. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and said, Nay, but we shall have a king over us, and ye shall also be like all the nations, that all kings may judge us and go out before us to fight our battles. Well, in a sense of the word, you can see what they were talking about. Uh, when they had a king, they had somebody to go to with a law and what they should have had. And to go to with the law and he would make a decision. Uh, he would build up when they needed an army to defend themselves. He would be the leader of the army. He would sort of take over everything. So that's what they did. They, God told them to just go ahead and do it. So we don't go into it where they go into the getting the king, but what they what what he done with with Samuel, you'll find in next week's lesson verses chapter whatever is where he selects Saul, and it's funny the way he selects Saul. Saul didn't want the job when they first took when they first got Saul. They got Saul down there for the grand opening, and he hid. They had to roust him out. He'd hid under a hay bale or something. Yeah, he didn't want it. And he was a he was a herdsman, and he had went to he had lost a bunch. His father had lost a bunch of donkeys, and he went to look for the donkeys. Him and his helper or sidekick or whoever it was. And they looked for donkeys and looked for donkeys and looked for donkeys and they, they never found them. And it came time and he said, we're going to be told to help her. He said, we're going to have to go back because he said, dad's going to be worried about us and looking for us. It's normal like every, every other day. And the helper said, let's just go to this one small town. Forget the name of it, Ramo or something. Yeah. And we'll go to that small town. And there's a man of God there, and he's speaking to Samuel, and said, he, maybe he can tell us where they are. So he said, okay, we'll take a chance on it. So he went and started there, and on his way there, he ran into these girls, and he asked these girls if the man of God was there, and they said, yeah, he's there, but you better get there, because he's going up on the mountain. And if you ain't there, he's going to be going, you can't go up there. So they made it a hurry to get there, and when they got there, that's when Samuel met Saul, and Samuel knew immediately when he seen him coming that that's who God picked. And that, that'll be in next week's lesson, and they can handle all that. But that's how he got Saul in there. And like I say, the, the first Samuel reads and studies everything up through Saul. And after Saul is dead, David takes over and that goes to 2 Samuel. Well, you know that, the, oh, uh, that Samuel was dead because when Saul was still king, he tried to call Samuel back from the dead. He got so much trouble that he tried to call Samuel back from the dead. The way he got in a lot of that trouble is he wouldn't wait. He was impatient, dude. And when when he anything was done, Samuel was still the connection with God. And he was supposed to start it. Have a prayer for it or whatever it is. Before like then they invaded the country or something. And the old Saul, he'd get in a hurry and you know, uh, he'd he'd try to do it himself. And that's what got him in trouble. Has anybody got any comments or questions on this? Samuel was raised a Nazarite too, the same as the same as he was. Right. I never knew that. Yeah, he was raised a Nazarite. Never cut his hair. Cut his hair. He was chosen. He was chosen by God. One of the few that was chosen by God to be a leader. When he, you know, when when Hannah went and to the priest and prayed and. And the priest told him, said, next year when you come back, you'll have a son. The same way with Sarah. When Sarah had uh, her son, 
Isaac, wasn't it? Yeah, Isaac. He was pre predestinated. He said, You have a son. She said, You know, I'm 100 years old. What are you talking about? But God predestinates these things. And it's just like the preacher was talking about this morning about this, this problem that the country's in today. There's a black lady from Washington, D.C., and you probably heard her, Glenda Randall. And she sings. She sings. God on one of her God on the Mountain is one of her is one of her greatest songs. And it is God on the Mountain is still God in the Valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And I listen to that a lot. And that's the way it is today. You know, uh, we never think of we think about that and a couple years ago God on the Mountain was in pretty good shape. The economy was great in this country. We didn't have no problems. Everybody's going to Myrtle Beach. The uh, heck of the act. Yeah, it's a little different today. Uh, we've got high unemployment because of this virus. Uh, poor old Phil can't go to Myrtle Beach. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's pretty good, pretty good shape for us. Maybe, maybe we fall in the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Barbie, what do you got to say? Can, uh, can you explain a little bit the difference between a, the judge and the king? Because it almost sounds like the same thing to me, except that maybe the king wasn't involved as much in the spiritual or prophecy. The judge, the judge, in, in, in the first story of this, when them two boys went down to southern, uh, uh, before the king came, Samuel was, he was directly with God. God sent all his messages through Samuel. There wasn't no Holy Spirit. There was the Spirit of God. And not everybody was endowed with the Spirit of God. Samuel was, but the average wasn't. So God's message came through him. These two guys, were, was they were judges. They went down there, and if there was a property dispute or something like that, they took care of it. And uh, if uh, they done they done this like a judge would do today, and if somebody had a somebody killed somebody or something, they went to the court. And yak, yak. But the the other one, the king, when the king took over, he was responsible for building up an army. You know, having an army, leading an army, and seeing that it's supposed to be everybody was treated equal. You know, each of the twelve tribes was sweet, treated equal. So he he really wasn't into the legal legal part of the job. The judge had done the legal part, but the king he was this sort of overseer. I, I assume it's just about like it is today. You know, the president he don't he don't he can't write law. You know. But he's got judges at the Supreme Court that do the law, and oh, uh, that, that's another example of not talking politics or anything else. But here's a Jewish lady up there that's 90 some years old and got cancer and, and been in and out of Ginsburg. You know, evidently God wants her there, or she would have been out of there. But how could she? Dish out justice. Because as, as this started in this book, in this chapter, about the reason they came to Samuel was because of old age. And brother, let me tell you something. Old age gets you. Old age gets you. You might think it don't. You might think, eh, I'm just good as it was when I was 35 years old. Yeah, that's just when you pull up over that curb and there's Kroger's and get the car hung up. Yeah, that's that's how much you're alone. You can't drive. Yeah, and you know, uh, if, 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 if somebody tells you something, and when you're 35 years old, you remember it, and now somebody tells you something, you remember about two minutes if you're lucky. That's why they got all those little sticker pads now. So <laughs> you can you can put them on there. Uh, as a kid, I remember Bill Good running through my grandma's house. My great grandmother said at the end of the table, I made me think of when I see you moving that cane around. You come tearing through there and she took you that cane to throw you down. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. It, it, it's kind of like telling you, you know, you're not, you're not doing what you need to do. Well, maybe, maybe it's time for her here. 